Interesting. Interesting. I, I like the fact that you've been able to walk away. It's, it's a lot cleaner to get divorced before you get married. Mm -hmm. And uh, so your willingness to do that uh, is, is a great thing, and more people ought to figure out how to do it. You can only do it if you're self-aware. And then if you're willing to go in and say, I'm going to explore this culture and see if it's one I want to live in. And Mark named the, the things that we um, suggest people look at. Theology, you know, is important. Right. And uh, so is the culture of the church. Is it, is it formal or informal? Is it contemporary or not contemporary? It, it, it matters, and it matters um, what the work culture is like. Is it a place where everybody works six and a half days a week, and that fits you just perfect? Is it a per place where you're expected to drop everything and be uh, at every night meeting? Mm -hmm. or is it, you know, and if that fits you, that's great too. But um, there's just a lot of things you ought to just sort of explore and say, I'm going to ask these questions in a really polite non-judgmental way to, uh, to figure out what this church is like. And that would be, I guess, I was going to, as a caveat to, of thought is, a lot of churches won't know to say that, say things, you know, they may right. not speak their sort of unspoken sacred cows and different stuff. They, they might not say they want to have, I, I'll say this because it was said to me, we want to have the flagship youth program of our, ch of our town. And I said, I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing that I'm probably not one of those people who can help you with that one. And um, <laughs> and and that was and I was, it was a right decision to, to. But most of them won't say that, though. I probably would say a lot want to, you know, in in, in many ways. And so it'd be in, uh, asking the questions, as you know, probing some of those exactly. will will get you some of those uh, answers. I think, or some of those. Well, cool. The uh, one thing I posted on our little Facebook page was just like, what would you give advice for new youth leaders to our crowd? But So because y'all are, uh, as your bios write up, youth ministry veterans, what would you give to some, uh, what's some of your best advice that to new... That just means old. Yeah. Well, you know, um, does that mean I'm old? I've been around a while, too. Does that mean? Nah, well, we, yeah. No, your hair color is much more distinct. I've got a few of yours over there. Ours the, blends in with the crap, the clouds. <laughs> not, not here. Yeah, I, I should say. Uh, disclosure: Mark and I are from the same town. You must have left and let all the rain come to town because it's been a horrible, a horrible rainy day here, dude. So, really? Yeah, man. It was like all nice all week long, and then you leave town, and then here comes the rain. Thanks. There ain't no sunshine when he's gone. No, it's terrible. It always rains when he's away. Yeah. No sunshine when he's gone. And he's always gone. I think there's long. a song in there somewhere. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, what, what would be some of y'all? What would be y'all's nuggets of best oh, advice I know, for? I know, new I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Why don't you leave the y'all thing alone? Ain't no sunshine when he's gone. <laughs> All right, before before you answer my my best advice question, I just am curious if you guys have gotten anything done in six hours with everybody the way you guys interact with each other. <laughs> so, we are totally linear. Yeah, <laughs> totally linear. I believe that. <laughs> if, you, if you had a PowerPoint that was leading us, we'd be doing better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair, fair <laughs> enough. Following a power we don't <laughs> actually teach together no. because it's too distracting. Uh, that, that, that I believe. That might be the first truthful answer of it of all. <laughs> Did I lose you? Are you there? Hands up, but I sit in the back. Okay. It's true. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good. Does that give you enough time to think of a good answer for the best advice? Yes, I'm ready. Go. Um, would you? Are you ready for us, Gavin? Best advice? Yeah. Are you playing free cell while we're talking to you? My, I can. <laughs> well, it's funny. My computer screen. My up. Oh, no, you're moving again. Y'all were frozen yeah, in time. Yeah, the same problem with you, by the way. Yeah, you know it happens. Yeah, you looked a little digitized. Yeah. Well. It's alright. Uh, you know, what am I gonna do? Right. So, Comcast. I'll blame them. So, yeah, so uh, best advice. Um, I think the best, you know, a few things. Um, one is we, we really want to encourage folks that are um, seeking a youth ministry job or stepping into a youth ministry job to m totally um, move out of the victim position. Um, most, unfortunately, so much of the culture around youth ministry has to do with 
this whole victim mentality, like, mm-hmm. you know, nobody understands us, our life is so hard, and, uh, you know, nobody around here volunteers, all that kind of stuff. And the truth is, we have a whole lot of power to set the future, to architect the future of our ministries. And so, just to make that decision, I'm going to take responsibility to lead and move my ministry forward. Um, that's my first thing. And the second thing is, um, I think as we're stepping into a new youth ministry role, we got to remember that it's our job to steward the church's youth ministry, not our job to import our unique brand of youth ministry, which is inherently temporary. We're going to be interims. We, we, you know, some people may be there for five years, but most folks are going to be there, you know, two to four years, and then they're gone. And so if, if we're not careful, we will build a ministry all around our unique giftedness so that when we're gone, everything can implode. Mm-hmm. And so our, our, our call is to discover the unique DNA of the church, to give up on the notion of trying to fix our church and correct it to be more like us, and to really steward the church's vision. So those are my two things. What do you got, Hefe? I would like to quote someone else in giving my best advice. I would like to quote the stewardess from the Southwest Airlines. Uh, Love it. Love feel. (laughs) We said, please remember to place your oxygen mask over your own face before (laughs) trying to help someone else. Uh, It's hard to do youth ministry out of a place of emptiness. And uh, I think we are doers by nature. And so we, it's easy for us to do instead of j- just to come out of that place of, of, um, of groundedness. And so, um, yeah, I would say we've got to get our own act together. Kids can smell a phony better than a search committee. And um, when we come out of that place of groundedness, it'll make all the difference in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're spending a good bit of time... Um, not just in this book, but particularly in our teaching about what does it mean to be an emotionally healthy youth worker? Mm -hmm. Um, Not just somebody who's having a regular quiet time, but somebody who knows their own heart well enough to know their own defensive mechanisms, the games they play to avoid God, the games they play to avoid hearing what God needs to say to them. So, um, yeah, that whole self-awareness thing is going to be you know, it's going to be really key. And unfortunately, most youth workers spend more time trying to figure out what they're going to do this Sunday night in youth group than they ever spend figuring out who they are and what they're bringing to the table, both for better or for worse. Cool. Thanks, guys. The, um, let's see. You want to, let's pitch out, since we really didn't do a great introduction, we just got into laughing fits in the, when we first started. Um, that is our introduction. Like, That's just kind of introduce yourselves real quick and uh, make a, Tell us a little bit about y'all's work with uh, the architects. I am not Mark DeVries. Fair enough. Okay, I got that. Who are you? I am not Jeff Dunrankin. Very good. Okay, cleared up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, hi, I'm Mark DeVries <laughs> from Youth Ministry Architects, and this is Jeff Dunrankin, also from Youth Ministry Architects. And uh, we, <laughs> how is that? <laughs> that works great. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Youth Ministry Architects is. Uh, Youth Ministry Architects is a uh, uh, a team of folks that works with churches in transition in their youth ministries, and uh, we love the the whole notion of helping churches build sustainable youth ministries. Um, and we walk with churches uh, often through a twelve to eighteen month process to help them uh, help them accomplish that. Cool. What yeah. else, Jeff? That's what I was going to say. What do we do when we're not? Doing youth ministry architects. Well, uh, we're, we're both uh, doing youth ministry. I do youth ministry in Florida. Yeah. I do youth ministry in Nashville. Woo! Yeah, it's raining today. <laughs> I've heard. It, yeah. It's raining, yes. It, Music City, USA. Flood City this weekend again. So, very cool. Well, thanks, guys, for being with me, cutting out. Uh,